What's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. I'm your host, Max Torres, publisher and lead editor of Ducks Digest, covering the Oregon Ducks on Fan Nation, part of the Sports Illustrated Network. And we are talking about a big development for Oregon in the transfer portal today. It is Thursday, May 5th, 2022. And before we get into today's episodes, a couple of the quick usual favors to ask of you guys. Kindly ask that you lock in with us on all of our social platforms. You can follow me on Twitter at mtorus sports you can follow the ducks dish podcast on twitter at ducks dish and then if you are watching this on youtube appreciate you guys tuning in leave me a comment letting me know about your reaction to this news for dan altman and the ducks that youtube channel is oregon football max taurus kindly ask that you like and smash the subscribe button so with all that being said let's get into the story of the day and that is the ducks just landed a commitment from South Carolina combo guard Jermaine Kuznard. And this was a commitment that the Ducks needed uh, with so much of their roster. I don't want to say in flux, but just the turnover that they've seen this offseason since uh, since the 2021 season came to an end with that loss against Texas A&M. There's just been a ton of movement. So what we want to do in this episode of the podcast is, is kind of dig into what kind of a player the Ducks are getting here, how this kind of came about, and what the commitment means for Oregon. So just to, to start off, uh, Jermaine Kuznard chose Oregon over competing offers from Gonzaga, Houston, DePaul, Maryland, UMass, and Ohio State. Um, so there's definitely some some solid programs there that the Ducks were in contention with. Obviously, Gonzaga is a pretty solid program. Uh, you guys, if you've been listening for a while, you know that I am a Gonzaga alumnus. So go Zags. Uh, Houston's definitely been making a lot of noise in the NCAA tournament in recent years. And then uh, DePaul, you have former Oregon assistant coach Tony Stubblefield running that program now uh, out in Chicago. So there's there's good company uh, that the Ducks won this recruiting battle over, and they did get a recent official visit from Kuznard. So always helps your chances. Obviously, we can get a guy on campus, but let's talk about Kuznard and his time at South Carolina. So South Carolina in the 2021 season they went 18 and 12 overall, finishing with a nine and nine record in the SEC, which is kind of a middle of the pack record for them. I think they were around the seventh or eighth team out of 14 in the standings. But for Kuznard, he spent four seasons at South Carolina. He redshirted in 2018. Um, so with all that being said, he has two years of eligibility at Oregon, right? So you have the redshirt in 18, and then you have 19, 20, and 21. But the 20 season was a free season for everybody. So he technically only played two seasons if you're looking at it strictly through a lens of eligibility. Um, and he'll join the Ducks in 2022. And then last season, Kuznard started 15 of 25 games for the South Carolina Gamecocks. He scored 12 points. He had, I guess I should say, excuse me, he averaged 12 points per game, which led the team, 2.5 rebounds per game, 3.1 assists per game. And then shooting the ball, he shot 32.3% from three-point range, and 39.6% from the field. So he's a capable shooter, and we know how desperately Oregon really needed that last year. I feel like they didn't have too many consistent shooters that they could really look to uh, when they needed some points. Well, Richardson was viewed by many as the best player on that team, but when they really needed him to take over, he, he definitely had some, some moments where he kind of struggled. I think in that Cal game, which is a really ugly game that the Ducks lost at home at Matthew Knight Arena, he definitely turned it on, but a lot of his scoring was coming from the inside. So they needed a guy like Kuznard, who's a combo guard, who can do a little bit of everything, and he can definitely shoot. Um, let's see here. So before South Carolina, we're just rewinding it a little bit more. Kuznard was a former three-star recruit out of East Chicago Central High School in Indiana. He was rated a 0. 8882 on the 247 sports composite and he actually spent his senior season in 2017 at Montverde Academy in Florida 
So if people know about Montverde, they have just become an absolute NBA factory for, for talent. Some names that people might know there. You have RJ Barrett, Andrew Nemhard, who's in this year's draft, uh, Precious Achoa, who was on, who is on the Toronto Raptors. Um, also have Philip Petrushev, who also went to Montverde. So there's plenty of plenty of quality talent that's come out of there. And the Ducks are getting another guy who, who has proven to be a very solid contributor at a high level. I think that just because he didn't start uh, every game last year doesn't mean that he's not going to be a valuable addition to this team. But like I said, started 15 out of 25 games. We're going to be continuing our breakdown of the latest Oregon men's basketball commit for Dana Altman. But before we do that, we are going to hop into a quick ad break. So make sure you guys stick around to get more analysis and breakdown on the other side of the break. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Ducksters podcast. We are breaking down Oregon basketball's latest commitment. That is Jermaine Kuznard from South Carolina. He's a combo guard. So what I want to do now in this second half of the podcast, a quick hitter one just with some, some big breaking news is, is talking about Oregon's overall transfer hall and just how much the team has changed since the end of last season. So let's talk about some of the pieces that Oregon's lost right now, and then we'll talk about how Dana Altman and this staff um, have gone about kind of rebuilding it or reloading because – I think Oregon has already established itself as a pretty solid recruiting power and they're in the position, especially in basketball where you don't necessarily need to engage in a, a rebuild, even after a season as bad as Oregon's was right. Dan Allman has established himself as one of the top coaches in college basketball, certainly in the uh, PAC 12. Right. And last season was just a, a huge bump in the road for Oregon. And I, I personally think it was an anomaly. Uh, I think, when I say that, I think that Oregon's going to back bounce back pretty handedly next year. But let's talk about the pieces that the Ducks lost since the end of last season. I think one of the biggest ones that stands out is Frank Kepnong, who announced his transfer to Washington. So the Ducks are going to have to play him next year in 2022. Isaac Johnson, uh, a big man at Oregon who really didn't see that much playing time, but he was a former uh, four-star recruit, I wanted to say. he's a, a, He was a pretty highly touted guy coming out of um, – coming out of Utah. So he goes back to his home state. Didn't see that much playing time. And then Devion Harmon was one of the more interesting losses as he is going to be returning to his home state of Texas. Uh, he originally started his college career at Oklahoma, spent last season, just one season at Oregon. Uh, and I'm not sure if he's going to be immediately eligible just because um, I think he's going to need a waiver scene that that will be his second transfer uh, in the college ranks. And the Ducks lose Eric Williams Jr., who is going to be pursuing a professional career. And then they actually might lose a couple more guys, or at least they're in the posi position for that to potentially happen, right? Will Richardson, a veteran point guard for Oregon, the most experienced guy on this team, along with Quincy Garrier, are both testing NBA draft water. So we're going to have to see what their ultimate decisions are. I want to say they have until June 1st to to take their names out of the draft so still some guys that we could see come back to Oregon ultimately but um I think that Richardson's pretty much done what he's gonna do at Oregon um I'm not that's not to say that Oregon isn't gonna want him back I think it'd be great for the Ducks to have him back but I feel like he, he's kind of maxed out his potential a little bit at the college level but Quincy Garrier was really turning it on strong at the end of that uh, the 21 season really was one of the guys that was shooting pretty consistently. Dana Alton was talking about how he didn't have to chase guys out of the gym, but last season, but he was also saying that Quincy Gary was one of the guys who was shooting better. And that was directly a result of putting the time in, in the gym, getting the shots up. So he came over from Syracuse and, and really made an instant impact for the ducks. So I think that that's a piece that they definitely want to get back. But so we had some of the guys that aren't going to be coming back that the Ducks lose after the 2021 season. And then some people who could still come back, but they could ultimately move on to another option and Will Richardson and Gary. A. So let's talk about the incoming class. Uh, that is the 2022 class mixture of guys from the recruiting, uh, from the recruiting trail, as well as the transfer portal. Um, so Dior, Dior Johnson, five-star guard out of Southern California, he headlines the bunch he has signed with the Ducks. 
and he is one of the best guards in the entire country. You got a guy who's a pure, who is an awesome playmaker, who can shoot the ball, who can drive to the rim, and he also does a really good job of setting up his teammates. So he projects as an instant impact guy for Oregon. And you figure if if with their losing Harmon potentially Richardson. I also forgot about Jacob Young, so apologies for that. Jacob Young has exhausted his college eligibility, so that front court is taking a bit of a hit just in terms of the guys that were on last year's roster. But Dior Johnson projects as a guy who can have an instant impact. And then you have Brennan Rigsby, uh, on, who's more of a wing, Tyrone Johnson from the JUCO level, and then five-star big man, Kalel Ware. I think whether it was the McDonald's All-American game or the Jordan Brand Classic, Kalil Ware, I feel like I'm always seeing these crazy stat lines show up in my feed, blocking shots left and right. He's a McDonald's All-American. He's a phenomenal player. Uh, really good situation for Oregon. Uh, they still have Nathan Biddle coming back. They lose Kepnon, like I said, but they also got back in Fale Dante, who I recently talked about on this podcast in the most recent episode of the Oregon Rundown. So that's a good piece for Oregon and to have him available to work with Dante Kalil Ware and Dante working together, I think in tandem will be really strong for Oregon and then having Nathan Biddle on the roster as well will help with that depth in the front court. Um, so let's see, where was I here? Let me just get catch myself up for a second. So those are the guys that are coming in from the recruiting ranks. But another big transfer that the Ducks got not too long ago was Colorado transfer guard Keyshawn Bartholomew. He was one of the Buffs' best players last year, and I feel like his play really stood out when I was covering those games when Oregon and Colorado were playing against each other. So like I said, with, with, some, tra- with some transfers and a lot of movement all over this roster, particularly with the guards and the wings, Bartholomew's addition is, is really solid, and I think that he's – Additions like that make me confident in how this team can perform next year because I really like how Dana Altman has gone about plugging and playing and trying to attack the portal, utilize that where he can to maybe get some guys that can play right away as far as are of the skill to play right away. Whereas some guys from the high school ranks might need a little bit more, might need a little bit more time. Um, but Brandon Rigsby and Tyrone Williams are both Juco guys. So Dior Johnson and Khalil Ware are the two that are coming from high school. And then just one of the, bigger points that I wanted to talk about is just how what I was alluding to earlier a little bit, just how much the transfer portal and NIL have really changed the game of college basketball recruiting. Starting off with NIL, I know a lot of people uh, are kind of up in arms about that just because it hasn't really been regulated too much by the NCAA. Um, The good thing for college basketball with the NIL, the bright side, I should say, is that some of these NIL deals that, um, that recruits are able to ultimately benefit from, right? Once they get to their new school, they can get set up with an NIL deal. uh, And then that ultimately allows them to profit up their name, image, and likeness. Some of these NIL deals, the NIL landscape rather, has helped college basketball keep some of these amazing high school recruits uh, playing college, as opposed to going overseas, doing one year of a professional career before trying to get to the NBA. So I think that is a benefit, just keeping more of those highly touted prospects playing college basketball. So that's incent those NIL uh, options have incentivized them to stay at the college level. And then the transfer portal has, has, you could say it's helped and it's hurt college sports. I think with all the college coaches that are allowed to be on the move at the drop of a, the drop of a hat, it's good that the players are also getting that flexibility um, and it allows these coaches and these teams to kind of rebuild their rosters. If they have a, a season where they're hit particularly hard by attrition, if they can go to the transfer portal and get guys that are more or less plug and play guys. So that's another reason why I like this Kuznard pickup because he's someone who I think really fits Dan Altman's brand of basketball, really athletic guy. He can get running in transition. He can create his own shot a little bit. He's got a good shot. He can get to the rim. So he does a little bit of everything, and I think that's something that they really needed uh, on this team as we head into next season. So the transfer portal, some people like it, some people don't like it, but uh, it's a reality that we have to live with right now, and we'll see how the NCAA chooses to kind of regulate it a little bit just to try to um, you know, get people all on the same page because it's just been a free-for-all, really, uh, in the era of the transfer portal. Well, whether it's football, the rich get richer, uh, as we see with Alabama, right, getting guys like uh, uh, getting guys like Ricks, um, 
And then they most recently got Jermaine Burton, who just won a national championship uh, against Alabama over at Georgia. And then he decided to come over to play with the Tide. But uh, it, college college sports are changing. And um, I think it's definitely interesting that Mark Emmert uh, is choosing to step down in 23. It's kind of like, you know, you see how crazy things are with the NCAA, with college athletics. And then the timing of that decision is, is a little interesting to me. Uh, if you guys kind of get what I'm alluding to there. Uh, but with all that being said, uh, I think that's about all I have for this episode of the pod. Another big addition for Dana Altman and the Ducks on the recruiting trail coming out of the transfer portal uh, with Jermaine Kuznard. So we'll have to see how he pans out at Oregon, but the Ducks continue to load up on some talented options ahead of the 2022 season. Uh, that'll do it for us here on this episode of the Ducks Dish podcast. Appreciate you guys for tuning in, however you're tuning in, whether it is the podcasting platform of your choice or here on YouTube at Oregon Football Max Taurus. However you guys are tuned in, we greatly appreciate your support. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to talk some ducks with us, and we will see you guys in the next episode. Take care.